the ban that Sneeko must have seen coming. From the multiple YouTube strikes his channel received, to content creators telling their audience to mass report his channel. It was inevitable, but still very surprising. Surprising because there are YouTubers who have done arguably worse things than Sneeko has ever said and they're still scot-free to this day. A lot has changed since I made the frustrating rise of Sneeko one and a half years ago. Sneeko was known as an artistic video creator trying to break into the mainstream of content. His videos were quality-based commentary, and the main point of his videos were to make the viewers think about life from different views. His approach to making content challenged the status quo. Sneeko said things people thought about internally but were afraid to say out loud due to how they would look. But he wasn't concerned about that at all. Well, at least in his videos he didn't seem to care. His videos from 2013 to 2020 were refreshing content you would rarely see on YouTube. Like Patrick CC said in his video about him, he was the YouTuber's favorite YouTuber. Big content creators absolutely loved his videos as they often made heartfelt comments in his videos back then. Mr. Beast of all people liked his content and made a video showing love to YouTubers, which he correctly predicted that Sneeko would be famous. At number two, I have Sneeko, and if you've ever seen Sneeko's videos, you realize that they're kind of addicting. Once you start watching them, it's kind of hard to stop. He's so straightforward with things, and he's not biased on anything. This video was made in 2014, way before the two became who they are now. Mr. Beast also admitted that Sneeko was the reason why he started YouTube again after he gave up around 2014. The rest would be history as Mr. Beast became the biggest content creator in the world. That just goes to show how much of an impact Sneeko had before he was popular. If you want more of that story, watch the video I made on him here or link in the description. Anyways, like I said before, things have changed exponentially since that video as he made a complete 180 and slowly stopped creating quality content on his main channel and switched to his second channel, Shniko, to post daily controversial reaction content. In short, the content ranged from misogynistic content about why women ain't sh and how the government is all a lie, and how you, the viewer, should escape the matrix that we are trapped in. To be clear, Sneeko has been talking about subjects of that matter since he came onto YouTube 10 years ago, but it was more civil, if you will. The thing was, Sneeko wasn't accumulating a ton of views he knew he deserved because it just didn't appeal to the mainstream at the time. Because of that, his fans related to him more because Sneeko's attractiveness was always that of an underrated content creator and a struggling teenager in Brooklyn, New York, who battled with mental health topics like ADHD, addiction, nihilism, self-improvement, and much, much more. This was around the time I discovered his channel back in 2019. I've seen the ups and downs with his first channel, from getting cancelled for liking the movie Cuties on Netflix, to posting a quote-unquote exposed Mr. Beast video after getting fired by him. I've seen it all. Before Sneeko switched to reaction content in mid-2022, his channel had slowed down quite a bit for the most part, and he was unable to inspire himself to create the artsy, introspective content he was known for because he no longer cared about anything. I'm gonna one take this and just try to get it on camera because I don't, yeah, I don't fucking care about anything anymore, yo. Life simply had no meaning to him. All of this would change when Sneeko started streaming reaction content on the Sneeko channel. His streams at the time were chill for the most part. However, that would all change in the summer of 2022 when Andrew Tate appeared out of nowhere and completely took over social media. Tate, a conservative red pill guru, made it mainstream to diss on women, such as saying that you shouldn't care about the government because blah blah blah. Despite the man being hated on social media, Tate is a smart guy that understands how things work in this attention driven world. He's well aware that his outrageous claims will get him attention, ultimately resulting in more websites traffic to his course and, therefore, sales. Finally, Sneeko had the chance to become mainstream by spreading his message to the people. Andrew Tate was growing a cult following and Sneeko had the same ideologies as him, and he knew that he could accumulate a stronger fan base than he already had by simply becoming kind of like Andrew Tate, or what the internet deemed him, Andrew Tate Jr. But he had to switch his personality on social media a bit. Sneeko took inspiration from Tate's mannerisms and his speech patterns and took Aisho Speed's raging personality and combined them together and created this. What? You think I'm a fake red pill? What do you mean? When it comes to dating and relationships, who is typically seen as the prize, the man or the woman? The woman, all of them, because look at their face. Of course they're the prize. Brett, take these off. <laughs> Sneeko, using his 10 years of knowledge from YouTube and social media in general, utilized his fans and asked them to use clips from a stream and post them onto TikTok for all to see. He knew he would blow up quickly because in general, TikTok is shock value, and with Sneeko putting on the raging Andrew Tate facade he had going on, it was perfect. The Sneeko channel blew up rather quickly. He went from 100k subs to reaching close to a million in less than a month. The content he was making caught the attention of Tristan Tate, who has a lot of similarities to his older brother Andrew. Tristan eventually hopped on Sneeko's live streams, and that obviously led to Sneeko collabing with the misogynistic alpha male, who is currently banned on all major platforms. This in return helped Sneeko gain more popularity, but it didn't last long because days later he was terminated from YouTube. 
It's believed that YouTube had the final straw when Sneeko met with Andrew Tate in Romania and then YouTube decided to terminate both Sneeko's first and second channel. The YouTuber Nick is not green with half a million subscribers more than likely had something to do with the termination as well, as he made a video telling his sizable audience to mass report his channel. There are creators who I disagree with and then there are people like Sneeko who actively threaten other creators on YouTube, spread hate speech, and overall make YouTube a less enjoyable and more dangerous place for everybody who's on it. If you watch this video and you also believe that Sneeko should be banned from YouTube, you can go to his channel pages, click about, and then click the flag icon on the right side of the page and report the user. Jideon, a popular YouTube prankster, reacted to the video and talked to Sneeko about it before the ban. So, are you going to tell your chat to mass support his shit or not? Because I don't encourage it. If my shit gets deleted, my shit gets deleted, but they're going to find me regardless. Because bro, I don't but that's lies, bro. You know you care. You've been doing YouTube for 10 years. Like, stop lying. Dion, yes, I, it's not letting it slide. It's people looking for attention because I'm litter than they are. But, bro, like, your channel's going to get deleted. If it gets deleted, it gets deleted, man. Some argue that the termination from YouTube was dumb because there were other YouTubers deserving of that more than him. But then again, it's a private company. YouTube can do whatever the hell they want. Sneeko then announced on Instagram that he would switch to Twitch for streaming. And while he streamed there for about a day, he was immediately banned. And that comes as no surprise since Twitch is more strict than YouTube. Now, Sneeko has seen some support from his fans and other popular creators, but also saw some celebration from his ops, the major one being KSI. The beef started when KSI followed Sneeko on Twitter, which was major for Sneeko since he's been a fan of him since 2013. But that same day, Sneeko went on stream and called out KSI for supporting Andrew Tate's ban. Basically, KSI wrote out a tweet that said, Thank God Andrew Tate got banned, in which KSI was referencing to the major social media platforms that banned him. Sneeko didn't like what KSI had to say since he had similar controversies in the past. He already tweeted that he was happy. Thank God Tate got banned. I'm like, you've been canceled so many times for doing Hesky time, for doing the R word face. It's what you were doing. And calling the creativity kit or calling Hustlers University a scam when you make videos promoting OF girls. Most of the people who watch that video are 12 years old. It goes on trending, of course, because- This was the video Sneeko was talking about. The Sidemen, who is a popular YouTube group boasting over 10 million subscribers, had a Tinder episode with Logan Paul. But the women in the Tinder video were fans, models, and stars. To the point of Sneeko, this clearly was the Sidemen promoting their Sidemen Plus streaming service to their audience of mainly kids. Anyways, after that video, they went to feud on Twitter, with KSI replying, you're lucky that I ain't got time for this. From there, the situation escalated as Sneeko hit back, arguing that KSI has no principles or character, and saying everything is about clout for him. KSI then retaliated, keep feeding bull to your audience. Remember, I've been doing this way longer than you have. Once again, Sneeko replied about making a note that KSI stands for knowledge, strength, and integrity. KSI then said that Sneeko is a man with zero values and that he is a quick trend that's dying. Sneeko responded with a tweet that said, what's real will prosper, which forced KSI to reveal the DMs between the two where he offered help and hoped that Sneeko wouldn't end up like Andrew Tate. So as you can imagine, when KSI got the news about the termination from Sneeko, he was loving every minute of it. Well, I mean... I tried to warn him. <laughs> I tried to warn him. Was it really worth it to quote unquote wake up the people who didn't want to be woken up? Was it worth risking the channel and presumably your main revenue source? Andrew Tate could afford to lose his YouTube channel and all other major social media platforms because he was already set for life. Ever since Andrew Tate got banned from the platforms, his popularity declined. But his decline in popularity goes beyond Google's search metrics. He's no longer making regular guest appearances on podcasts. He's not been on Twitch and TikTok where he gained most of his followers through fan accounts. Outside of mainstream social media, Tate's latest home on Rumble and Getter haven't seen the same traction his Instagram Twitch streams and YouTube videos did. The same thing goes for Sneeko, as he was pulling hundreds of thousands of views on his YouTube channel, the Sneeko one of course, to now barely getting a thousand views on his Rumble channel. At the time of this recording, he only has Instagram to promote where he posts his content. Sure, he has Rumble now, but will Sneeko have the same impact like he did on YouTube? Maybe he doesn't care about the views and really cares about getting his message out either through YouTube or the relatively smaller platform he uses as of currently. The man that grinded for years pushed out great content that touched on religion religion, mental health issues, addiction, street interviews, and basically got nothing in return. He basically got pushed to go full Kanye because it sells, and it makes sense on his end. Why switch back to the main channel that's doing subpar when you can make more money on the other channel that's blowing up and accumulating more views than the main channel ever did? As of now, 10 years worth of content is gone. The man who grew up on YouTube that's been documented on the site is nowhere to be found. Sneeko even made a final message video similar to Andrew Tate when he got banned, if that's not enough proof that Sneeko is somewhat putting on a 
persona. All in all, he chose the wrong worldview, at least to the people up at YouTube. They gave him multiple chances, but he decided to carry on, and that's what cost him. He's been warned by his peers to chill out, but Sneeko didn't seem to care and continued to push his extreme red pill beliefs. Sneeko became what he desired not to be. Maybe this is a good thing for Sneeko, since the mental toll that takes on you of putting on a persona for so long is damaging. It's too much stress for one person to take no matter how big or alpha male you are to social media.